frustrated <laughs> i'm so frustrated with that things were going so differently than i expected what after we learned that messi wasn't playing and then it all fell apart and it's so frustrating it's more frustrating given how it played out than some of these recent results that we've had i think um welcome to the hair nuts podcast uh, I'm joined today by the full crew, Dave, Chris, and Jose, friends and fellow Inter Miami fans. Thank you for joining us. Uh, on behalf of the guys, we want to thank you for stopping by for episode 64 or 65 uh, on the Heron Heads podcast, your first time yes. all things Inter Miami. Uh, for those of you watching live on YouTube, thanks for stopping by and be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons when you're if you're enjoying the show. Um, thank you to our chief Heron Heads Matias, Chao, Abu, Ava, and Mari V. Thank you so much for your continued generous support. Thank you to our other Heron Heads that are showing down below. And if you'd like a link to support us on Patreon, uh, you'll find a link in the description wherever you're listening. There's also a link to our merch store. I don't think anyone's wearing merch. Anyone wearing merch? Yay! Jose and Chris are wearing merch. Uh, you'll find a link for that as well in the description. Go check it out if you guys are interested. And, uh, Beautiful, Chris. Thank you. Um, Chris likes the uh, the back shot there. Same, ooh, same thing. <laughs> I have the same, literally the same shirt on. <laughs> so uh, now that I've really now that I've um, given myself like the excuse not to talk about the game for long enough, let's talk about this game. So uh, immediate reaction: the game ended less than two minutes ago. So how is everybody feeling? If you don't feel like you got punched right in the gut. You weren't watching this match, at least not as an inner Miami supporter. Uh, we had we had the game, we had the momentum, we had the game plan to stop their attack. Uh, and yeah, it's funny how just three yellow cards to one player, and it just derails your your whole game plan. <sighs> uh, it's frustrating. You you expect when you played that long of a stretch of dominant ball, because let's be honest, they were they were dominating. Uh, you expect to at least get out of there with the draw, seeing as it was 1-0. Um, but, yeah, you feel bad for Gomez, who, who played really, really well in this game. And he really hustled out there, and he was he was played fantastic. And then he had one mistake, and that leads to uh, a really, really nice goal for, for Los Rayados. So it's painful. This this one hurts. I don't think there's there's any way around that. Yep, yep, yep. That it's it's very depressing. Um, it was a great match all around, all the way to the end. That that double yellow or what everyone thought was triple yellow at some point, <laughs> but they did clarify that Alba was like right behind him when they showed him the yellow. So, um, yeah, that that double yellow just killed us completely. Killed the momentum. Um, our defense played very, very well, which is the worst part, right? That's always our weak spot. And, and man, they held their own today. Um, they stopped Brandon Vasquez all night. Uh, it, was, it was just it was just a great performance by our defense, and it just sucks that Ruiz got kicked out. It sucks that Gomez made the one mistake all match long to get that game winner. And, and yeah, it's – what else can we say? It's, it is it is gut-wrenching. It's – it sucks. That's the only. That's the only adjective that I could that I could uh, come up with right now. Still kind of in shock. Yeah, we, we had a lot of a lot of opportunities. What sucks is that you you let a lot of young guys kind of mess up the game. To be honest, we had at one point there was a, a give and go that go, that Suarez had earlier in the game, and he was just fuming. And it's just because we we we, we had a lazy shot attempt that, that just it trickled out yeah it would have been lovely if you made it but i'd rather suarez get the get the, get the ball back to be honest and so that's it was there where i was like okay well that sucks that may have been messy instead giving him that opportunity well it could have been um, robert taylor could have been robert taylor that was, was the hurt. guy who subbed on for robert taylor that was afonso so yeah i mean so so you 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 go from from earlier in the game where we were kind of we were kind of dominating it seemed but 
but I think they they were dominating first, and then we were dominating, and it was a little bit of back and forth, uh, and and then all of a sudden you, you know, that that the, the stupid red card it, it just derailed the whole game. But but to be honest, we kind of were we were kind of reeling at that point, L- leading up to that red card. We were we were kind of reeling. I felt like they were getting control of the game at that point, and then all of a sudden. Ruiz, Ruiz just just lost lost handle of his uh, emotions or something. I don't know what happened, but um, it sucks because he's 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 a good player. It just he he totally he totally messes up, and and there's nothing you can do at that point because because if we're reeling and on top of that now we have you no know, one man down. I mean, and we don't have, we don't have our best player. So it's all I can tell you is that Suarez is an animal. And you could tell he wanted that he wanted to get another goal so bad, and, and I was like, man, this guy. If you're not a fan of this guy, I don't know what to tell you. Man, the, the lack of awareness from Ruiz. You you know you literally just got a yellow card four minutes ago, and you're out there swinging your arm and and elbowing people like that. That's just unacceptable. I've been a huge fan of Ruiz since he's been here, and he's shown great great strides, and and he could be a very good player, but. Man, you have to have better awareness, and that's super unacceptable. There's no reason for that at all, whatsoever. I totally forgot that that's Chris's boo. Totally forgot for a second. I'm sorry, I, think, I, I said that, Chris. I yep. think Chris is gonna break up. We may, we may take a break. We may go on a break. Well, he, he's suspended for the next game, so you're, it's, it's it's definitely at least for one game. Yeah, super super frustrating. So Rayados came out, and they kind of were on the front foot to start and our goal came off a corner Toto with a really nice finish. Uh, he sort of just stuck his leg out, but got good power on it and put it in the roof of the net. Um, and it seemed like after that month that was sort of reeling, like they didn't know how to react. They didn't, I mean, it was completely against the run of play. Um, and from that point on, they just, they, they didn't know what to do. And, our defense was playing really, really sound, really, really well. They were they they boxed they, they put Brandon Vasquez in the Mukhtar doghouse. You know what I mean, Jose? And he found no space, he found no joy in the game, and they weren't even attempting crosses into him, which I found really surprising. And then it just it well, slowed. We weren't, about, we weren't allowing that though. That that's right. I feel like that's what it was our- great. It was great. We were closing down the space really well. Um, and then, you know, Monterrey started chasing the game. It was getting towards, you know, the 60th, 65th minute. And they were sort of pinning us back. And I wouldn't say so much that we were reeling, but we because we were defending well. Like, people were getting pulled out a little bit, but then there was really good rotation. The defense was still playing very soundly. But we were under pressure, for sure. And then it was just... Ruiz picked up the first foul, and you could sort of see the frustration starting to build a little bit. And then the second yellow was just so dumb because it's not like it was a, a quick action foul. It was the play was so far past. Like the the Rayados player had already passed the ball away, and then Ruiz pushes him in the back, and his hand kept sort of going in an upward motion and just hits him in the face. And it was just like a straight, no doubt about it second yellow and it was just so infuriating because you knew given how the game had been shifting where they were pinning us back that we were going to see the Monterrey that everyone had spoken about so highly of and sure enough it was not long after that that Ayados got back into the game and then they found the the just devastating game winner which was Cocho it was Rodriguez who will miss next match so it's Good in the sense that he's not going to be around next match, but he did his damage now. And now we go in to a hostile environment in Mexico. We have to score. We have to win 2-0. Or 3-1. To, to three advance. One. Um, really tough. Really tough. And, and now, you know, we were all saying... I was especially saying that Messi for sure was playing. It All signs pointed all day that he was going to play. And then really late, really late, really close to the match, it started trickling out that Messi's not going to play, that the progression is going really well, but that he's not going to be part of the the team. So now 
you know, my confidence level and even saying he's going to be ready next week. I don't even know what to expect. So it's just a really, really tough loss to take here. I'd say next week is a must play for Messi, even if he's like almost there in his recovery at the very end. I, I, I think for the club's sake to, to this, for this season, not to be a failure, I think he has to play. He has to find a way to play. It, it is what it is. They keep saying, Oh no, we want, we don't want to risk anything. We don't want to risk anything. Okay. But when are we going to risk a little bit to get him in there in these big games and, and make his presence felt right now, this is the biggest game of the season, hands down. And if we don't see him play, then, then, you know, it's a, it's a big question mark. It's a, it's a big knock in my opinion. I don't know if it's the club not willing to risk him. I think this is Messi having his eyes on, on, is it Conmebol? From that Copa tournament, America. Copa America, he wants, he wants to play for Argentina. I, that's that's always been Messi's pride and joy. This is his national team, whether that's justified for us as fans of Inter Miami or not. Uh, it's for us to debate. We but, saw that we saw that last year, right? Yeah, no, I mean, he, it's always been the case with Messi. He he always puts Argentina first. You knew what we were getting into with him, especially in a more advanced age. We were kind of hoping that he would put Argentina on the back burner. And try to just dominate all the trophies that he can get with Inter Miami. That might not be his priority. Uh, Inter Miami might just be a little lanyard for him, a little extra to to put on his on his crown. But it looks like Argentina is still his his main priority. Uh, it's unfortunate because, yeah, you said that you fully expect him to play the next match, but I fully expected him to play in this one. This this match carried a lot of weight. So there would really, there's no excuse for not playing this match if you're close to being ready, and maybe not start, but or start and just come off early, or come off the bench. If he was close and he really, really, really cared about this tournament, I think he finds his way on the pitch. You can't tell Messi no. I don't think that that has that authority. And this in this club, the one who calls the shots is Messi. So it's disappointing. It's hard to not be disappointed and. And then just to talk, talk about Ruiz again, we've seen a lot of bonehead plays uh, with this club because there's a lot of young guys on there. I think this is the most angry I've ever been at an Inter Miami player at any point in in my my lifetime of watching this this club over the years. And we've seen Noah Allen just play poorly, but this was so stupid. This was just a very very stupid selfish foul that just snatch the game out of out of the the club's hands so yeah i'm really really pissed off at at david ruiz right now i hope he learns from it and grows from it because we we know that he has he has skill and he's a young player and you hope that he gets better but i hope that that he thinks about this one long and hard because it it might have just completely screwed up the the chance of this of this tournament for this club well i'm gonna gonna tell you though david i don't think it's it's so much that we know for sure that all oh, he missed because of Argentina. I, I we don't know that. I mean, it's it, if it's a hamstring injury, it's it's rough. Uh, if you especially with a guy that that's that kind of relies on his his quick turns, his quick uh, change of pace. Um, he, you know, I'm, I'm, this is a pretty big cut that 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 we're that we're in the and then it's like we said in the preview. We this is our biggest game so far that we've playing. I mean, I'm. I'm sure. He, I'm sure that he's. If he could have gone, he would have gone. Um, but we're we're going to be playing now. What uh, we get on Wednesday, we, we we play again. We're playing in Mexico. Yeah, I think if I think it's one of those games where we we're gonna we're gonna probably have Kramaski. Uh, we're gonna have Messi, and let's and let's go. We're, we'll, we'll be in we'll be in Monterrey with uh, with full staff. That's, Are we that's, gonna that's, have Kramaski? Are we gonna have Messi? Like these, we we don't know this for sure. You, you can't say with any kind of confidence that we're going to have these guys. We haven't seen them. In, we haven't seen Messi in a month. We haven't seen Kramaski since the preseason. If I mean, it's tough. This is one that you you had to come away with at least at least a tie. And and to have it at that situation in, in the 65th minute, and you're up 1-0, and you're pretty much in the driver's seat of this match, and then you blow your load like that, knowing that you have so little behind you, it's it's just a lack of composure and and I know we were messing around. We're like, oh, Tata's to to blame too. I guess 
if there's a composure issue, that's on Tata. But you, 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 he got both yellows so fast. So it's like you don't even have time to to pull somebody for him if you do think he's melting down. And then let's say he does melt down, and you and you're able to take him off before the second yellow. Who do you put in? Yeah, that's the thing. I was thinking maybe Sunderland, maybe because after the first yellow card, I was like, all right, David Ruiz got to come off, got to come off. That's that's how I felt. That's why that's why I did say I did send the text to you guys. I was like, man, why are we keeping this guy on? He, and, and, it's, and it's also understanding watching the game where you're like, he's he's also like playing erratically. He's playing extreme. It's a very physical game, extremely physical game, and and it's one of those things where you you need fresh legs anyways. You might as well get and and wait. Not to say that Ruiz was the only guy that had a yellow card. Everybody, it's, I think everybody had a really yellow I mean, card by the end. Messi, Messi doesn't want to watch anymore. Um, Messi's, Messi's out. <laughs> Messi's out. Um, yeah, I mean, just I think the only thing you could say is that the team had done so well to that point, like they had defended so well and so structured and organized that it was working for them. But it's just it's it's very selfish and it's a lack of awareness on the part of Ruiz, obviously, and he's super young, but it's 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 kind of inexcusable like regardless of his youth to me it's just it's such a pivotal match and it's so important to like hold on the this is right our, our defense is so well they even scored yeah <laughs> right yeah i don't know what to tell you um the getting a result even a draw without messi would have been so massive heading into the second leg but losing it just puts us at such a disadvantage that even if Messi plays in all his greatness, we're at a tremendous disadvantage because realistically all Monterey have to do is sit back and dare us to make space. And we always have trouble with that. It always ends up being a super magical play that breaks something like that down, which we're capable of, especially if Messi plays, but it is just, we're at such a, such a disadvantage now that it makes it so hard to emerge from this round. And it all is based on the one moment where David Ruiz just lost his cool. And it was just so dumb. And it it's like, I, I haven't seen that to that level from him before. I mean, it's obviously like very specific, but it's just, it's hard to move on from. It's really hard to move on from. Just to be clear, the next match, if we win 2 1, it goes into penalties, right? Yeah. So that, that would be best case scenario. Just because of the. the no, best the case scenario bat. is 3 1. No, or no. Zero. Uh, uh, the uphill battle that we have. I mean, four, let's be real. If Messi doesn't play, do you guys expect to score three on these guys? Could barely score one today. So if we get into penalties, a 2 1 win into penalties. That would be that would be an easier path to victory. Uh, looking from where we're at right now, I I think I think we had plenty of chances. I well I say plenty. I think we had a couple chances that we didn't take full advantage of. Jose mentioned the play with Suarez that it was a give and go. We had Alfonso there who had recently come into the game, didn't play the one extra pass, and Suarez would have been. By himself at the penalty spot, one on one with the keeper, it would have been a tap in. I even want to say another one. I, I think it was like right before that one, where Suarez was on the right, was on the right. Uh, it was a three, on, three, three versus on the, one on the yeah. right wing, and he could have gone one on one versus the defender, and he chose to do a flick into the into the box. And I think Alfonso went on the outside of the defender rather than going on the inside, which is totally reasonable to expect him to have done that. To be to be honest, like it really should have been that way because it was like our it was a three on one. There's a defender right here. Yes, Suarez right here, and and you had another one like out here. So it's like I don't know whatever. And, and he, he <laughs> both of them decided to go on the outside, and I'm like, why didn't one person go on the inside? It's ridiculous. I so mean, I gave him like no Alfonso, Alfonso took himself out of that play too when the pass came to him, and he either took a bad touch or a weird pass, and it slowed the run down. And it kind of gave the defender a chance to kind of catch up and, and compose exactly. himself and put him in a good spot. Because if that play goes, if it just flows naturally, 
I think Suarez takes that defender one on one because he has him on his back heels. Uh, but because Alfonso took a weird touch with that, it kind of gave the defender a chance to really get in between Suarez and the goal. And then Suarez is like, well, I know I got two guys on that side. Something's got to work out. But unfortunately, it didn't. And what another thing that, that we had a lot of opportunities is I felt like Alba had a lot of good opportunities to put crosses in there. And his crosses either offloaded or they just never found the right uh, person in attack. I was a little disappointed with the way Alba played. Not just this match, but the last couple matches. I feel like there's there's a lack of something there. He took that one shot early on, and I think Julio thought that that he might have pulled something, and Noah Allen was warming up on the side, so maybe that contributed to his lackluster passing in, in the attacking third. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, and Busquets. I mean, he's been solid. He's been solid at the pivot. I'm just trying to highlight the the main players here and see what what's going on because it's been a few matches now that we're not getting the results that we should be seeing. We have plenty of talent on this team that we should be seeing positive results that we shouldn't be losing all these games. Shouldn't even be tying all these games. So something's got to give, maybe it, it is data and data out is going to start trending on Twitter uh, locally. At least I don't think anybody really cares outside of, of South everyone, Florida. Everyone, and, cares. everyone cares. Yeah. Okay. I hope so. I hope so. Um, but that, that has that, that ultimate crutch of, oh, well, we're three weeks without Messi. What do you want me to do? But also, you have plenty of talent on this team. You're the manager. Figure something out. Get your guys to perform. If you need Messi to win, then maybe you're not as good a manager as you think you are. David's so mad right now. I'm David, furious. I'm honestly David, furious. David, this is the thing. This is the thing. Child brought up a really good point. I think that I need to have like some kind of a game plan so that I can like write plays. I think everyone would like that. But Isn't that what that white thing behind you is? That's an AC like top, but that would be pretty cool. Imagine. You should put a glass, a mirror. You should put a mirror in front of your camera, and just with a dry erase marker, just write on that on a glass, not a mirror on a, on a see through glass. That will either be one disastrous or two hilarious. <laughs> No, it's, it'll the, be both. It's going to be both. It's going to be a disaster. Yeah, it could be a disaster. Yeah. 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 It could be both as well. And or. And or. Great idea, little child. I'm going to write that down in, in our comment. In our, not, in your, not on your whiteboard. You're going to write it. Correct. <laughs> I'm going to write it down somewhere. But that's good. Good, good, good yeah. information. I see Shoes is saying that he's here for evil, Dave. I'm sick. I'm dealing with stuff. And then I come back, and then I get treated to this horse hockey. Get out of here. We, we deserve David, better. David Ruiz tarnishing the David name. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, that's why he's David, and I'm David, because David, why don't you out. Do, do me a favor. Everyone seems to hate uh, Gomez right now. Why don't you just I like, don't hate Gomez. Well, just say that he's good. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Gomez had, Gomez had a bad error, and I and I feel for him. But when you play so well the entire match – and you have, I understand it's it's the, the mistake that blew the game. But as far as I'm concerned, if David Ruiz doesn't blow his load on yellow cards in a four minute span, we're not in that position. At that point, we're, we're, we're just scraping to get through the match. So it, it's tough. Yeah, we should have cleared it, but we didn't. And unfortunately, yeah. that ball, the ball, it found that it found that offensive player and it took an outrageous goal for him to score. Yeah, really tough. I totally agree on, on Gomez. I think, again, he just has a solid game. Yes, he's going to lose possession. Yes, he's going to misplay some passes. But I think the sentiment of Gomez is doesn't have a spot on this team. Like, first off, who are you going to put in? Secondly, he's highly regarded now in the league as someone that's not going to be in this league long because he's destined for a top five move. To me, Gomez is integral into what we are trying to do and the pass that he played in the pass that he played in is exactly what makes him special and his ability to turn defenders talk about chances that we blew yep he couldn't have put a better ball in play there he really couldn't have and who 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 couldn't stay on their feet to score uh it it took an incredible tackle by the defender though 
You have to give the That was a great tackle. That was a beautiful tackle still, by the defender. They threw it. Yes. I, David it Ruiz was a great goes pass. The floor all the time trying to trying to get a foul. It was a great pass, but it was it was a great play by the defender. It was just as great by the defender. You can't fault David Ruiz for that one. You can't. I can, I can and I did. I just no, have to do I know to tell you. You're just on a rampage tonight. I don't know what to tell you. You're just on a rampage. All right, no, you know who was on a rampage Relax. tonight? David Ruiz. <laughs> it's uh, curious. Yeah. Hey, guys, guys, by the way, uh, Robert Taylor stepped up today, right? Let's so let's talk about Robert Taylor because I find I'm finding this recurring uh, soft tissue injury to become it, it's becoming Tissue. It's becoming a recurring theme that's really it, it reflects poorly on the medical staff, and I don't know if there's bad like pre and post game recovery training going on, but we have Robert Taylor now, who it appears has a hamstring injury. We have Kristoff who's out with a hamstring injury. We have Kamaski who had a hernia injury. I don't know if that's soft tissue considered or not. Uh, Doctor Chris, let me know. Um, we have Redondo who had uh, what was it LCL. It like messy, obviously, of course, but it's it's like a recurring theme here, and it's it's becoming worrisome because it feels like almost every match we lose a player to injury, and like I still think we have a good team. Like on paper, even tonight, like the we said it, yeah. Obviously, we'd rather have Messi, but that's a good team. Like that's that's the best starting eleven that I would have put out there, given the available pieces, and. It's just wearing at our 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 depth, you know. I didn't even mention uh, Faku, right? Like Faku's out ACL. That's a recurring injury of his. I don't necessarily blame Inter yeah, Miami, not, but that's not, that's not I mean, it's just it's it's brutal. It's brutal. It feels like the injury bug has been just nagging at us almost every match. The heat, also, right? Like, what's happening there? Yeah. What, man? What, the one night that I get, and they go back and forth. Uh, and the Panthers, am I right, Chris? <sighs> yeah, they got whooped tonight, too. How about the Marlins? They haven't won a game all year. Ay, are, we ay, ay. are we done with this? Can we start bashing David Ruiz some more? No. I, what, you know what I want to do? How about this? We had a lot of bright spots. How about we touch on that? How about Cello? Cello played really good. I, I enjoyed him. I he had a couple. I, 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 I enjoyed Cello. I think he had a couple passes that were a little rushed at towards the beginning of the match, but he settled in really nicely, plays defense really well, and that's I think the biggest um, the biggest difference between he and Yedlin is his ability to play defense, uh, and he gets up in offense really well. He picks his spots, and he has just like we saw in his first game. Just really good chemistry off the bat with the players on that right side. Um, he's able to do some short, quick interplays, and he he's a seamless fit. I'm I'm super happy with with Cello. That's for sure. Yeah, he, he's constantly putting stuff in in, the, in play. He's uh, he's always making a play on 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 the ball or on defense. He's he's everything Yellen Yellen wishes he was. I'm not the type. He's 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 extremely well played with an offense, defense, uh, everywhere, all around. He's a force, all around great player. He's a force on defense. Uh, a few times he just stoned uh, an offensive player in transition, just stoned him, just taking the ball from him and stopping him with his momentum. Like it's it's impressive to watch anybody on defense do that. And uh, he's I think he's the only player that we have in the back that. That actually does that at any kind of consistent level. Freire, Freire has the strength to do it, but he doesn't have, I don't think, the technical um, ability that that Cello has displayed. Um, yeah, that that I agree. Cello Cello is continuing to be a bright spot. Seeing him, man, it's you. It stinks, man, because you really would have liked to see him play with Redondo because they're they're showing something that we haven't seen, and it would have been nice to have that those two players and their presence on the field. Um. Yeah, I'm just in a lot of pain today. <laughs> Obviously, your voice. The, the, you're the, just, you're just the sad. Ultimately, ultimately, guys, like when you put it all into perspective, you're we, we we were a man down 
and while we were all talking, like we were expecting, like 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 uh, I think Marcos just said that, yeah, we we expected to play Real Madrid, right? Like like the, the way that the hype was coming, it was like if we we're gonna, this is the hardest team where we're gonna play, and everything. Losing two one, it was. It's, it should have been worse. Honestly, we're not. We didn't it have should have been team. worse, but it should have been better. We shot ourselves in the foot. Like, yes, given that we were down a man, didn't have Messi. If you had told me at the beginning of the match that we were gonna have ten men for thirty minutes and that Messi wasn't gonna play, I'd be like, hey, I guess I'll take a two-one. But given how the game played out, taking the early lead, defending as well as we were, losing two-one, it it, it it feels awful. Because we made we made Mont Monterrey look very pedestrian, very pedestrian. So to the point of yeah, we thought they were going to be the cats meow. They look like little little pussy cats. They didn't look like anything scary. They just they we we kept them in check, and 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 we blew it. We blew it. We had them with their backs on against the wall, and, and we let them off the hook. We did. We let them off the hook. There's a bright spot. I know you mentioned one of their players got a second yellow, cumulative yellow, uh, from the Cincinnati two, match. Two other players. I know. We mentioned one, but yeah, there are two players that will be missing the next leg. So that's that's a positive. I know one of them was a starter. I don't know if the second player, if he's an everyday uh, starter for them. So uh, that we have to look. I have to look into that to see if, I, I, if I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. You're just gonna go off on a limb and say, "Yeah, okay, I I believe in you, Jose." Yeah, Cocho yes. will be a big miss for them. I don't think yeah. they have um, great depth right now in the midfield, based on what I heard from some Monterrey uh, reporters. But neither yeah, do we. It, it, <laughs> it stinks, man. Well, we we won't have David Ruiz. Unbelievably, everyone else that got a yellow card wasn't carrying one. I think the only person that had been carrying a yellow into this match was Redondo. Obviously, could not have picked another one up today, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we're we're from the first whistle, we're gonna have to chase the match in Monterrey, and that puts us at a serious disadvantage because our defense is gonna be isolated. We're gonna be, I don't know, it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting. I don't want to get into like the formation talk because I think everybody knows it, but look at the four three three. And how well this team executes it. I understand now we have Cello. We have our two true center backs in that one. And, of course, Jordi Alba. But, my God, look at that. When you have four adequate players in the back and a formation that suits your, your team, what a difference it makes. Um, hopefully but, Tata sees this and doesn't screw around moving forward. What were you going to say, Chris? Sorry. The question is that, or the, the issue is that Robert Taylor is hurt. Who knows how bad the injury is? And he's our left wing. He's our left wing. Who else is going to play out there? We saw Alfonso was not good. It would have to be Kramaski. Kramaski, we're not sure. Maybe he's back. Maybe he's not. I know he played this week with the uh, with the second team or the the academy or whatever. Well, um, they but a, um, they can do a four four two and have yeah. two strikers and and four mids. It's another option too, but but yeah, that, that injury to Robert Taylor, as much as Jose hates him, it's it hurts us. It hurts us with our four three three um plan. No, I, 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 he he's super important for our team. It just it's games like today where you kind of were hoping that you get that brilliance that he put on last year when we won the cup, right? But it just for some reason he's 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 been gone. I, I don't know if he he's kind of ha goes hand in hand whenever Messi plays. A, he kind of plays. Obviously, he plays better with Messi playing, right? But man, it's just you kind of hope we're hoping for a banger today. Yeah, I mean, a second goal would have been glorious. I mean, I was shocked when we scored the first goal, just based on how the first fifteen minutes had gone. Um, to the point of the four through three, to an extent, I feel like that's maybe why people look at Gomez in a negative light. The 4 3 3 with Gomez and Busquets and Ruiz. Gomez and Ruiz or Gomez and Redondo. Gomez and Redondo were given a lot of freedom to sort of advance, where Busquets then had the opportunity to sort of just clean up. So Gomez and Ruiz in this match, there's a lot more chances for them to turn the ball over because they are given the freedom to be more adventurous because they're sort of the, the bulldogs, the hounds that then chase the the play down when they turn it over 
Um, so to an extent, I think Gomez is given the liberty to try things. And I don't know. I'll keep defending Gomez pretty much for the next for the foreseeable future, because I think he's been great, but I do think that the formation may play into that and how they deploy the midfield on either side of Busquets. I think they might do that moving forward. You can use Gomez as your pseudo left wing, left mid. And maybe, sure. maybe just maybe we get Messi back. Messi kind of just floats around. So I don't know if they'll deploy him instead of like just on the, on the, on the depth chart as a striker or right mid, but Messi doesn't really matter. He plays where he wants. Ah, man, I'm not happy. <laughs> like I, I keep think, trying to like psych myself up about what's coming up, and I don't know. I'm in, a, I'm in a negative headspace right now. It was nice to see Toto score again, right? This is his second one this year. I think he his scored second one goal ever. ever. His second professional oh, goal. Yeah, ever. he scored again. Oh, even even back in his last league? season. Last season, last season he scored his first professional goal with us. And now he just scored his second professional goal. Dodo's young. He's a young pup. Also, just so you guys, so you guys know, the the Inter Miami men of the match, Bresso, 7.4. Drake Callender, 7.4. And Dodo, 7.4. Drake and had I, a very good game. Yeah, made, I was going to say. It was like, what, seven or eight saves I think he had all game? The first and, goal, the first goal, I think he was super unlucky because he made a really mm -hmm. nice first save. Busquets yep. should have done better clearing. Yep. Yep. He had some nice saves all, all game, and the two were just crap luck. It is what it is there. Yeah. Second goal was beautiful. I mean, yeah. Me Meza. He, he actually got a finger on the second goal, too. He actually did get a finger on it, and I mean, mm -hmm. that, that was perfectly placed. Yeah. He had to get like two fingers on it. Um, Meza was a, actually had 9.3 so, sofa score rating. Pretty rough. He was a man of match. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing this. So you guys just keep talking. I'm going to tell you just random stats. No, you keep telling us the random stuff, and we'll keep being really quiet about it. What was the possession, Jose? Because that's something that we talked about in the preview, was who was going to – I imagine Monterey killed us in possession. Hold. Great. It felt like Monterey had possession for most for most of the second half for sure. I think in the first half it probably was closer to even because Miami wore on the front foot after the first 10, 12 50%. minutes. Yeah. Can you split first and second half? Hold. That's asking way too much. <laughs> no, I I would find it interesting. 57% Monterey. In first half. Okay. So then second half, they must have been 59. 59, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Didn't we talk about the last match about uh, possession 60%. and we'd rather not have not have the possession or not win the possession battle? When you, have, are, the Bulls weather, when so. you have a player on red, I feel like the possession usually gets thrown by the wayside at that point because it's easier for them to possess the ball with, with an extra man. He, he, we didn't have a red card in the first half, David. Explain that. Yeah. But we had a goal. So is anyone we're usually winning that we don't really need the possession? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think I think the tactic that was deployed by the team was perfect. It was perfect. Like like I said, we had Monterrey where we wanted them. We had the lead. We took it off of a set piece unbelievably because we never score set pieces. Suarez almost had a goal on a set piece as well. And then it, it just – it goes straight back to the David Ruiz red, puts that man disadvantage. And you could see, you could see Monterrey, the way they were passing back and forth. And this is something that Inter Miami don't always do when, when teams sit in a low block, they're passing a, around like from side to side. You could see like every, with every pendulum swing, it was like three yards closer, three yards closer, three yards closer. All of a sudden they were passing sideways in our penalty box. They had 91% pass accuracy. So yeah, yeah, we and had, the we and 80, the, the number of hit, passes we hit eighty four percent. You have the number of passes. I I bet they had a lot more than us. I have that they have twenty one shots and they pelted uh, Drake. That's what I have. Great. 
Hey, shoes. Shoes wants a shoes wants a silver lining because he says everyone's very depressed. I gave the silver lining. lining. They have two players that can't play next match. Five hundred and thirty-three total passes. Here's here's another silver lining. Here's another silver lining. To three eighty-eight of ours. Okay, great. Here's a silver lining. David Ruiz will not get a red card next match. The silver lining for me is that we made them look pedestrian. So I have faith that we, to some capacity, will be able to play in a similar fashion and be able to control the game. Hopefully, if Messi plays, I feel all the more strongly about that. But they, I, I'm not so intimidated by Monterrey anymore. Obviously, with Amanda's advantage, they looked incredible because it was just, I said it, it was going to be fire at will time. And sure enough, they were just like, completely pinning us back and just shooting at firing at will. Uh, but to me, that's the silver lining is that Monterrey look, they look beatable. We missed some chances. We, we scored a nice goal and we, I mean, we, we did not let them have good chances until we went a man down. And for being honest, being realistic here, a massive silver lining is we do have a solid chance of having Messi in the next match. So we'll have basically the same group as we had today. If everybody stays healthy, minus Robert Taylor, and we'll have Messi in there. So if we were able to hold a 1-0 lead with a full squad through 65 minutes, 65 plus the three of the stoppage time after the first half, uh, I feel like we have a better opportunity if Messi's on the team, right? So that's that's a massive silver lining if we're really looking for one no but, yeah. there's other ones no not a silver lining there's okay. other ones I, I, no, no i think you, you, you guys are being too pessimistic look ultimately they were they were overrated yeah david's being super pessimistic it's ridiculous the, this team is not real madrid we we handled them pretty well um they needed a red card to let them back into the game um we're, we're going into their house now we're gonna probably you know have Messi, I mean, we're hoping, right? We're hoping that gives them another week. Um, another thing that you're going to see is, look, did, did anybody here watch New England versus Club America? Right? Okay. What happened there, Julio? They got beat pretty bad. Pretty bad, Bob. Right. We didn't get beat pretty bad. We, we, we hung in there, and we showed guts. Up until the end, I felt like we were still going to probably get another goal, to be honest. We, we, we were fighting, and, and it's one of those things where – we, we, we don't have quit in this team, and, and I would like to to think that we go into their house and, and we're going to have another, like, opportunity to show that. And we're, we're going to – I think I think that we're we're getting overly um, annoyed because today we had a lot of chances and we just didn't put it behind the net. But ultimately, there were chances. And, and we were going into this game not really knowing who are we going up against. Is, is this Goliath? Are we David? No. No, we're 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 an evil. We're, we're literally the same the same caliber. That's how I felt. We're the same caliber, and there's no reason why we we we, we didn't win, and we're sad about it. It's not because they're that much better than us. We're upset because of the manner of which we lost. It's not. I, I didn't go into this match shaking in my boots about this club. I know a lot of people were, but. You saw our starting lineup, even without Messi. I looked at that at that group. I'm like, this group can can do stuff. This group can make noise. I'm proud of the group of players that we sent out there. That's that's arguably the best lineup we've sent out there all year. I understand Messi's not in there, but as a group, as a solid group of players, that's that's probably the best that we've had out there. Uh, so yeah, I feel that and that formation with those players with those skills, they can beat just about anyone that we have scheduled to play. So yeah, I, I I wasn't scared about about this club. I'm pissed off about the manner in which they dropped the ball here. That's that's the issue. You want to hear my silver lining? Our defense. No. Everyone's okay. yeah, whatever. I don't care what you say. Our okay. defense. Our defense. Hey, our defense had a very good game. Very good game. We saw Freire was back from injury. We have Cello out in in our right back. Just those two guys. That addition those additions it just makes the defense look so much better and so much together they're they're playing together even when even when there's a nasty turnover i forgot who who created the turnover earlier that we were talking about in the alfonso. chat but yeah Alf yeah alfonso 
he created a nasty turnover and the defense was just caught off guard and out of place, out of position, but they still recovered well. Cello got back. He got in the way. He didn't make a block or anything. He got in the way and allowed Drake to make – actually, no, he, Drake didn't make the save. The, the shot just went out to the right. Dude, but he terrible. still was in the way. Shot. <laughs> he, he, he ended up taking a terrible shot, but the guy was wide open. The guy was wide open coming out of out of left field over there. So so great the defense, defense terrible shot. <laughs> the the defense recovered and and the defense played well all game. All game and that's something we got to look forward to next match because we should see the same four in the back line uh next Wednesday. That should not change and that's definitely a huge silver lining in my opinion. Definitely. I, I feel like our defense is solid. Um it's just one of those things where with Redondo getting out, I think that kind of sh- shocks our system in the midfield. Because he was such a settling, just a settling player. So this isn't our best Inter Miami team because again, we're we're, we're injury ridden. Uh, so it's like uh, I would love to see us not be injury ridden, right? But when we weren't, I loved I loved watching that Redondo, Busi, and Gomez midfield. That 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 to me was our strength at one point. Yeah, because and, but we had and, that great midfield and we had garbage behind it. That, that's what I'm saying. That this this group that we had the starting group was sound from top to bottom. I understand that we've had when Redon was in the midfield. Of course, that's way better. That's a way better midfield. When Messi's in the attack, that's a way better attack. But at every level, this club that we had, the, the starting lineup, that's the other thing. The starting lineup that we had was just solid. I felt like these guys could do anything. And then, yeah, once you have to start making subs, when Robert Taylor comes off and you put in Alfonso, when Don Ruiz gets eliminated, these things, these things, immediately just destroy the, the the soundness of that starting group if we did have yeah i agree that since everybody's not healthy as a as a group as a total group you're not as sound and you don't have those fresh legs like how great was it in last last year in in the league's cup when you were able to trot out kermaski out there and he just runs like a crazy person and doesn't make stupid mistake after stupid mistake so, but instead of him, you have Afonso. It's that that hurts us. But I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bat for this for the starting group. The starting group made sense. Tata had his best lineup of the season, and again, that's that's why I'm I'm a little frustrated. Just a little bit. A little bit. It's okay to be a lot frustrated. <laughs> yeah, so really interesting. We have a match against Colorado this weekend. Um, so it will be interesting to see who comes out and plays in that match. I know we're talking about like the Koga Kaf matches uh, today and next week. Um, but it will be interesting to see how much rotation is done uh, because the trip to the trip to Mexico is going to be uh, taxing. So it'll be It'll be just interesting to see who plays. Do you guys think that we'll have like a very heavily rotated squad out this weekend? I don't think it'll be too crazy of a rotation, but I think the the older players, I think Suarez, Busquets, and maybe even Alba get get rested. I'm not sure, but Mike V and shows is making me want to watch the Pachuca game. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. I think we'll see the older guys uh, sub out. I, I think we'll for sure see Suarez either start on the bench or just be out completely he's played a lot lately and he he was gas at the end of today's match because he was giving it his all so I don't, I don't expect him to play this weekend um i feel like busquets alba have played a lot too so we, we may not see them either we may see ruiz again we may have to see ruiz again there's no other choice i think someone in the comments said it a little while ago i think we just have to see ruiz if, if we want to rotate all these players out as no, no, much we'll as we want to punish him as no, much as, as, as we want to punish him, he's going to see him. His punishment is he's going to have to play left back in Alba's place, and he's going to have to play the whole match. That's his punishment. No, they, could put, him at, they, they could put him at goalie, give Drake a rest, just let him get pelted. But then you're just punishing everybody else. Like, that's not that's not fair. Yeah, Icy Fox said that, which Icy Fox also asked about uh, the Sunday preview. But we're going we're gonna to release one for that, I, I'm assuming, right, guys? Yeah, it'll be out either Thursday or Friday, depending on our individual schedules. Stay tuned. Yeah. Uh, Chris, anything else to add? I'm good. Okay, well, uh, disappointing for sure. 
uh, Inter Miami had a, a firm grasp on this game, and then we let it slip through our fingers. So, two uh, one final score to Monterrey against Inter Miami. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and hanging out with us. Uh, there's a ton of uh, activity in the chat, which we really appreciate. Uh, it helps move the conversation forward. So we really appreciate you guys. Uh, go ahead. Discord. Yeah, the, the Discord. Yeah. Uh, he was just asking I'm, about I'm, the Discord. I'm the only one that's on the Discord right now, Shoes. So if you want to talk to me, that's great. Um, it's fun. Great. I'll, I'll get on it this week. Nothing else to add. Come on. We're, we're, doing, working, you know? we're working on it. We're working on it. By we, I mean we have it and we're trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the works. So the Discord is in the works. Um, but if you guys are still hanging out, please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already because it tremendously helps us out. Uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us on this uh, somber evening now. And uh, on behalf of the guys, thanks for stopping by the Heron Heads podcast. Your first stop for all things Inter Miami, and we will catch you on the next one. Have a good night, guys.